That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> that, deserve, that deserves a chuckle. Dennis, what's what's up with you, bro? How are you handling? <laughs> You've rushed into this. I'm not sure I've, I've had a belly laugh. Well, but, you know, I'm I'm fine. I, this is what I want you to do, though, in the first hour of the yes. show, is I want you to find a good joke to tell me. <laughs> a really good one. That you'll have to go off on some tangent where I can just be researching just the whole time. Whoa. So... <laughs> About your plumbing or about your concrete you do uh, <laughs> slab bullshit. Oh, I do have a concrete story to of, open the show. Of course you do. Why? So I've got to call in the city officials. Oh, let's get right into it. Calling in the city officials. In this story, in, in our, we, we have 26 listeners, mm-hmm. as far yep. as I know. And as they, some of them... One remember, for each letter of death. Well, actually, I don't know about okay. the... Listener cue. This is for you. I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know how many there are. <clears throat> but I had put in sidewalk slabs at my cost when the city was putting in several sidewalk slabs on their cost. And I hired the guys who were taking away the concrete and hired the guy who was pouring the concrete and said, hey, yo, you're here anyway. Give me a deal. Go ahead and rip this up and carry it off. And go ahead and and pour this concrete with your crew that's here. What's it to you? Two slabs, four slabs. And I'll give you enough money that everybody who's working for you can spread it around. But give me a deal. And I know what a deal is because I know what prices are. I don't say that to them, but I'm telling you. Did you write you, the art of the deal? Yeah, I got great deals. There's no deals better okay. than mine. Nobody's ever done a deal as big as yes. my deal. Okay. My deal is so big that if this deal was a man and I shot him on Fifth Avenue, they'd let me go. If you smelt it, you dealt it. If you felt it, he, you smelt it. If you felt it, Dennis dealt it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, long story long. The slabs that my buddies put in and the, and the first city crew were good. Well, along comes the second city crew, as, as the listeners know. And the distress when I learned not only were they going to tear out one or two of the slabs that the city had poured at no cost to me, but they also were going to pull out uh, one slab that I had paid for. That's not acceptable. And I thought nothing ventured, nothing gained. You take the slab out, you replace it. And, of course, my first thought was I wish that I hadn't done it. I wish I hadn't spent the 125 for a slab to be framed and poured when it was going to be undone, and they never, so why didn't right. they tell me that? But here's the issue. That slab, which is in front of my driveway, which is crushed stone, as you very well know from the crushed stone story, I think it was a subtitle of one of at least two or three episodes in a row. We have crushed, it was we've crushed and stoned on this podcast. We've, <laughs> we were crushed and yes. stoned. And... The corner cracked off. The corner of the slab cracked off. There will be a stern letter sent to the city. There, I will not rest until the corner. The corner cracked off. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. My wife looked at it and said, "So what happened here?" I said, "The city workers, they they, they didn't do a good job." She said, "What are they?" Corner cracked off. I said, "They didn't build up the. They didn't have a solid foundation to pour the concrete on, and so when it got when it rained." Underneath that concrete there, it washed the dirt away because it wasn't packed tight. And then it created a pocket. And when a car drives over a four or five inch thick piece of concrete. This was about the time your wife said, yes, Dennis, whatever, honey. Stop talking about this. No, at this point, she had taken a chair and lit a cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, darling, continue. Just just like our listeners, as soon as you said that there was a problem with the slab, they found a chair, sat down. (laughs) <laughs> Letter cigarette. cigarette. I was like, tell me about how this corner cracked off. And I want it fixed. I want it and fixed. And this is what I'm going to do. We all do. Our Everyone listeners want it fixed. People, can you encourage people to write yes. in and stuff? Yes. Letters. No more than three pages. No, no. One inch one inch margins, 12 font. Double spaced if you want. Times New Roman. One. They can be double spaced if they want. No, to make I hate those. Look thicker. I hate those. It's a waste of paper. It's a well, waste. If it's only one page, you can double space. But if you're... if you're, It's three pages. Maximum three pages. It's a minimum of three pages. I want oh. to hear... I, I want people to go on. I want... Okay. Come on. No crack, right in. No cracked corners. What you think? Tell me what you think. Am I right or am I wrong? And if either way, why? And I know it's going to be hard to keep. No it cracked pages, corners so. in Kalamazoo is our slogan. It's not right. But this is what I'm. Kalamazoo also corners going to with, a, with a corner spelled with a K. Well. You don't cut corners. Ooh. In Kalamazoo, with all K, 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 K. And <laughs> you don't build pockets. You don't. This isn't billiard. This isn't we're hoping for underground tunnels. This isn't like adopt a fucking mole program where you're making it easy for one of these varmints to crawl underneath no, your no, sidewalk no. to get from one part of your neighbor's lawn to your no, lawn. Bullshit. To eat the roots, to kill the lawn, to make mounds all through the lawn, 
like some crazy raised vein in the freaking arm of the of your no yard. cut corner you ever seen a trap to catch one of these moles i've got one it's a it's a jaw a jaw of death and you set it by stepping on it with a very heavy spring and then you put the whole damn thing in the ground and when the creature crawls from where that creature is to go through the hole that is in this giant jaw of death that's about <clears throat> eight or nine inches high and you step on it to put it into the ground and it's so powerful that even though it's in the ground and it has to chew through a little bit of ground too it'll latch onto the head of that fucking critter and it says holy moly or there ain't no muskrat like my own muskrat amen brother there ain't no gopher like my little friend he comes into my yard my gopher? he means no harm and at the end of the day, I have his fucking head. My gopher is now a winfer. My gopher. How do I <laughs> How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. My kingdom for a gopher. Hey, what's the poem? Oh, Captain, my captain, about... It's a poem written by... Let me see if this is true. Walt Whitman about Abraham Lincoln. Oh, Captain, my captain. Find it and let's... And oh, let's captain, discuss. my captain. Our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every wreck. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting, while fellow eyes, the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But, oh, heart, 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 oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. Fuck, man, that's deep. That's So am I right? It's Walt Whitman about Abraham Lincoln? It is... It, it's totally wit, man. And beep, beep, boop, beep, 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 researching. It's an extended metaphor poem written by Walt Whitman in 1865 about the death ah. of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln. Well received upon publication, so the poem was Whitman's first to be anthologized and the most popular during his lifetime. So with that in mind. Oh, Dennis. Oh, Dennis. All right. So you have it in front of you. I don't. So I'm going to start it. it. And I want you to say the second line. So here Hold you on. go. Let me pull it back up. Or you can put it in no, chat. No, I've got it. Okay. Go. So here's the first line. And you got the second line. Oh, gopher, my gopher. What have you done to my lawn? <laughs> the. Are you continuing? No. You got go for oh, gopher, my gopher. What have you done to my lawn? <laughs> you got it up in front of you. I can't make a poem. I don't know. The, the grass. Cadence of the words. The grass has weathered. Every season, but the spring has come and gone. I don't know. Where we need to workshop this. This is good though. Okay, oh, go let's pull up the whiteboard and do it right now. Hey, open the lines. I want to talk to our listeners. Open the lines. The lines. The, lines, the phone lines. Ah, uh, yes. In. Call into one eight hundred five five five. Happy hour is the uh, line to call into. Ring, ring, ring. <laughs> yes, caller, you. <laughs> Speak, speaking of color. Hey man, this is Stanley, man. I'm driving the Stanley. Kids. How's it going, man? Long time listener. This is our first caller, so everyone is the first time caller. So welcome. I love the gopher thing. I used to have a gopher. In fact, I've got the gopher in the back seat of my car. I had to call. Whoa, are you like? Because the gopher, my gopher, and I, and I know you killed it and stuff, but that's okay with me. I want to kill this one. Is this? Are you like Bill Murray and Groundhog Day? Where you've got the the gopher just like up there at the steering wheel while you drive off the cliff, Stanley? Come again. What? what? Say it over. I don't know, man. This, the, the weather's changed here. I've got my second shot. I became ill, mm -hmm. mild illness, I'm sure, compared to what I've heard and compared to what others have told me, but had uh, muscle and body ache. I had uh, mm -hmm. headache, had difficulty sleeping, but was very tired. And the headache lasted two days, and I thought, this is cool with me. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> it's like, uh, this or death, this. let me think. Mm -hmm. Come on. And now our first poker game, actually... It was postponed by a, a, a week for one of the card players' wives weren't wouldn't be past her fourteen mm -hmm. days. So and you didn't want to gamble. He... <laughs> yeah, that's, you got a full house. That's, that's right. So the it was sixty today, but then or sixty, then it got cooler. But it is that the weather has turned, and it, while we might get a cold day here or there, we know for sure 
there's no more snow and it's time to get the sports car out of the warehouse i have it to the end of the month yeah baby and i'm going to put a top on it my truck was stolen like they ended up assessing it Nick, can i tell you the story um, i paid 3100 for the truck five years ago and they assessed the truck at 4500 and so i got my 3100 back plus i got to keep the truck which would say well, well what's the truck worth they assessed it at 4525 and i said wait a my truck is worth 4500 bucks and still you're wanting to let me have it for 1500 and he said, yeah, because we don't want Plus, to you sold all the parts in the scam, so... No, they didn't. It was odd. They stole some shit out of it. Wait, wait, wait. And then, of course, the truck back? I got... Oh, yeah, we oh, found the truck. But it was spray-painted black. Whoa, okay, let's go back. I told no, you no, the no. story. No, huh? oh, oh, I mean, oh, oh. I've heard the Rolling so Stones I get, song, I'm hoping but... the truck's stolen. I'm hoping the truck is stolen because I want yeah. a new truck. Just give me the money. I'll put it toward a new truck. And you're like, and, hey, Jack. Hey, 10.30 hey, at black. night, cop calls, hey, we found your truck. I said, really? Where'd you find it? Oh, we're at the we're at the Days Inn Motel, which is where apparently truck thieves leave trucks when they're done because nobody notices that a truck has been sitting in front of a motel yeah. for days. It's natural. I mean, for um, Days Inn. And uh, <laughs> for Days Inn and Days Inn and, and uh, blah blah blah. And it's GMC 2001. I said, yep. He said black. I said, no, it's not black. It's green. I it said. was green. And there's a funny twist. Is that it, uh, remind me later? What the funny twist is when I said the truck is green. Oof, <laughs> that'll be tough. But anyway, I said, no, it's not black. And he said, it's black now. <laughs> and I said, whatever. And then I said, so what's the VIN number? And he gives me the vehicle identification number. It's my truck. I said, all right. He said, you need to come get it. I said, well, I can't come get it. He said, why not? It's your truck. I said, are the keys in it? He said, no. I said, I got another set of keys, but they're, my, they're at my son's. He's in bed. He's got to go to work. It's 1030 at night. He said, you got to come get your truck. And I'm like, like no, I don't. I said, uh, impound my truck. And I'll have to get it out tomorrow. And he said, well, there's a cost with that. I said, no, my insurance company will pay for it. I'm not, I can't make shit happen mm -hmm. here. Plus, who the fuck wants to get into a truck that hasn't been cleaned properly? It's not like you just get into a truck that somebody stole. They probably, how do you know they didn't shit in it? Or rub their fucking crotch on the fucking stick. That's what I do as soon as I get into in any vehicle. And then I fasten my seatbelt. But first, Let alone when you first steal. the, first the so stick. So I go the next day, I go to the place to pay for the car, which is across town from where it's stored. And I said, I come to pick up my green truck. She says, ain't green. It says black. I said, it's the right VIN number. It's my truck. But you don't write on there that it's black because it's not black. We were all green once. And We're... I filled it out. And I wrote green. And then she took it and she crossed it out. And she wrote black. Oh, man. And I said, oh, fuck it. You know, I got the receipt. I went all the way across town. I called the number. The gate opens up. There's a guy in a car. And there's my truck. And the motherfuckers who stole it bought about eight cans of black spray paint. <laughs> And just spray painted the shit out of that truck so that when the cop said, we're looking for a GMC certain color, that wasn't mm -hmm. the color. So here's a funny story. Finally. It was never green. It was Final gray. Time. And I kept correcting them, saying it isn't black. It's green. And it wasn't supposed to be green. And I realized it because they didn't paint the hood, the flat part of the hood. They painted only where headlights would show on a truck that there's a black truck, not right. a gray truck. Yeah. And I remembered that the cap that I took off the truck and stored was green. God, what, you're such a difference. And in my file, this is what I have for our listeners. They're going to like this a lot. Yes. Let's get your file out. This will probably not be in the show notes at happyhour.fm slash zero. No, zero. Happyhour.fm slash one zero. Well, you can cut that out. I can't find it. But I have a picture of the model truck I have from the file that the guy gave me, who was the original mm -hmm. owner. And it ha and the truck in the picture isn't gray; it's green. And the only thing I'd been looking at since my truck was stolen with that picture, I got the file out. I looked at. It, I said, "Oh, I already got all this original stuff." And, I, and then in my head, I, I turned my fucking gray truck green. <laughs> isn't the but mind crazy like that? Like you imagine things the way the last time you saw a picture. Yeah, twice. And my and my wife says, "She said, what are you saying? Green? It's not green. It's gray." I said, "I think I know the color of my own <laughs> truck." Shut up, honey. <laughs> she rolls her eyes and like, okay. <laughs> so there I am with my gray, now mostly black, spray-painted truck. And they did a lousy So you job. have it. You have it and the money. I got it back. So I, all I, I started right up. I put some gas in it. I took it to the auto place where it does my service because the brakes felt a little funny. And I had to store it somewhere. They got a big parking lot. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it home. It's ugly as shit. And I called the insurance and they go, blah, blah, blah. And this guy says, I'm the appraiser. I'll be there. I'm coming in from Indiana. I'll be there at 1030. 
And I said, I told him the address and he said, oh, and I said, well, I got to walk you through the, the truck. I said, what, what, what's wrong with it? I think they screwed up the brakes and this and that. And he said, listen, a truck that old, it's been stolen and they spray painted it. I'm totaling it. Yeah. I'm totally. I'm going to give you full value for the truck. It's, I don't know what they did to it. I can't assess mechanically, but just looking at it, the paint, job. And I said, you're right. The, a paint job, which is what insurance would pay for it, would to paint it, is over five grand. The truck's only worth 45. So it's total. And it's worth 45 because it has a $300 toolbox in it. And I added a towing bar and it's got a trailer hitch and it's got a towing package. It's, it's it, owner. It's, it's priceless. Priceless. Well, it's 3100 is what it is. So now I'm getting the uh, truck fixed, and it'll cost me 300 bucks, and we're back to where we were, and I've got a bead on a, I got a pre-approval from the bank. I love this. I say to the bank, hey, I want to buy a car. They say, you're a good customer. We'll just give you a pre-approval. I say, okay. So what are you going to buy? And I said, I'm going to buy a used truck, no more than $10,000. Sorry. So they sent me the thing, and they said, here it is. And I said, oh, really? Wow, that's cool. What's the interest rate? How much is it for, and what's the length of term? And he says, it's 1.99% which is amazingly mm -hmm. low, next to zero. And it's for 63 months, which is over five years. And you can borrow sight unseen, $35,000. <laughs> I'm like, this okay, is, do, you wanna, do you want to see this me? This is what happened in the fucking it, Talk to me or anything? Like, no, you're good. You're good. So I go to the dealership. I find a truck. I drive an hour. I go to the dealership. Hey, you've got a Toyota Tacoma. It's the only one of three trucks that Consumer Reports recommends buying for under $10,000. Certain years, a Toyota Tacoma, certain years, a Toyota Tundra, certain years, a, a Honda Ridgeline. It's only three trucks. No Fords, no Chevys, no GMCs, nothing. So that's all I buy is what they do. Japanese, tell. baby. Right, that's yep. it. And then I go to Kelly Blue Book that assesses the value. Kelly Blue Book? Is, is she a friend of yours? Kelly? Yeah. She's yeah. Irish. And, uh, Kelly Blue Book? Huh? Well, there's a Kelly Green book, too, but it was a joke you missed. It was right over your head. But you Europeans, you probably you don't have much by way of services like this. And then it tells me, it asks me a bunch of questions. I answer the questions. It tells me what it's worth. So I go out to this place. I say, hey, you got a truck. I want a consumer's report recommends it. Kelly Blue Book says you're right in the middle of the value of it. That means Kelly's it's like, go, price. go, go. I like the looks of it. And I get there. I go there. I got a rental car because my truck is stolen. And mm -hmm. I go and it's getting fixed. And I still have a rental car. Four bucks a day for the rental car because insurance is payable. I say, oh, so I, I like this truck. I like the looks of it. It's everything I want in a truck. I need to take it home. I have to have my mechanic look at it. He says, okay, you didn't do that. And uh, he says, I'll be just a minute. And he comes in and he says, okay, the plate's in the back. Thanks for a copy of your driver's license. Here's the keys. I wasn't there five minutes. Five mm -hmm. minutes. He got up, took my license, made a copy, got the keys, got the license plate, and said, let's go. And I said, don't you want me to sign anything or... There's no paperwork. Do I need to look at a contract? He said, no, no, you're good to go. We got your that's driver's your, license. Good luck. That's your white male privilege just all over the map there. All yep. over the place. You look like we can trust you because you I love the truck. It's white, black trim. Rides good. Just what I want. Good price. You could spray paint it Thanks black. to my mechanic. To. <laughs> there you go. Bring it on in. I see a white Tacoma. I can't stand the look. I have to take the spray paint and take another look. With the Kelly Blue Book. I took that spray paint and I painted that Tacoma. It didn't much look like it was in the tundra. Anyway, where good were stuff. We? Good stuff. I have. Oh, so I took it home, and my mechanic said, "I'm not spending any time on this. The whole underside of it is rusted. The bolts will fall apart within a year, and it'll all fall apart. Just take it back." That's like what you don't want your doctor to, to ever say. <laughs> your I've undercarriage looked, is completely rusted out. <laughs> I've I've looked at all <laughs> the places that most people don't see, and holy shit, I don't think there's anything we can do here. I called the lady who sold me the car, one of two people, not the guy who helped me, but the lady who's in charge of sales. And I said, hey, I'm going to return that truck. I'll be there in about an hour, but I'm going to... She said, what did you think of it? I said, I'm going to pass on it. And she said, oh, okay, well, that's fine. That, that happens. Do you mind telling me why? I said, the entire undercarriage is rusted out. The bolts are rusted. It might fall apart. And she said, oh, man. I'm glad you checked. That would have been a big mistake. <laughs> I said, I'm glad you think so. This is the woman who, who was trying to sell me the truck. Yeah. <laughs> she said, oh, yeah, bring it back. And, I bet you, and then I thought, she's thinking out loud, I bet you the next guy isn't going to exactly, check. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but not like she's going to tell me. They're not like they're going to lower the price. Always. 
So I got a beat on a, I got a beat on another truck, but that's another boring long story. I want to. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to hear any more truck stories until you've purchased the next truck. Although you need to know that two weeks into this, the auto policy agent said, "Oh no, we don't reimburse for stuff that's stolen. You have to have your homeowner's policy." I said, "I wish I'd known that two weeks ago. We could have processed these two things together." And I said, "And you know what? That means there's another deductible." <laughs> And I just paid a $100 deductible. The appraisal on the car was $100 more than what I got because I had a $100 deductible. Oh, yeah, homeowners. Who's it through? And I said, well, I don't know. And I go into my files, I hang up, and I said, wait, it's through them. You fucking dumb shit. How come you don't fucking know this? You've been treating, you've been looking, did you not? First of all, why didn't you tell me that my stolen shit wasn't covered, number one. And when you knew that it wasn't covered, why didn't you check to see if I had a homeowner's policy through you? Because, of course, that's typical that a customer's got both kinds of policies with you. But, no, then I call homeowners and, and leave. I'm going to get a call. I don't get a call. I don't get a call. I get a call. She leaves a message. God dang it, I can't take the call. I'm on a business call, and I've been waiting for two days. She leaves a message, call Emily. I call Emily. I leave a message. Emily calls me back again. I miss it. I call Emily twice. I can't find her. I've only left her really one long message. And finally, Emily calls me, and it's five days and six phone calls. And I said, oh, Emily, we connected. She said, yes, I'm calling you about the $1,000. I'm, I'm calling you about the $500 worth of stuff that was stolen. You left me the message, and you told me what it was. And I said, yes. She said, well, unfortunately, that's not covered because you have a $1,000 deductible. And I said, and you didn't want to just leave me that message five days ago? Why? God, how annoying is that? It's you is, is there is and she said and I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, that you called and, and this and that and I said I wish I'd known this a couple of weeks ago since it's through the same policy the same company that cuts the other policy and blah 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 and and, I, and she said and just to make sure that we can talk things through and I said Emily what exactly is there to talk about the stuff isn't covered it's a thousand dollar deductible I th isn't the conversation over. Yes, it really is. I said, it's good to talk to you. Thank she you was, for She was lonely. Time. She wanted to talk to What the fuck? I spent hours in, in unknown, and I saw my policy. I was afraid of it, that it was a thousand, but policies are written like in Greek for freaking Frenchmen. I don't want to read the policy. No, I won't take a shower. <laughs> yes, that sounds like a Frenchman speaking Greek. Yes. We will tune back into this gripping Long, sad episode. story with, next, the, with the insurance. So I'm out the 500 week. bucks. When? But then I get the money for the truck. Tennis. I'm trying to, so I'm trying like, to leave right. something for the future. A little suspense. Well, here's okay. the other thing. So now I got Where's a truck for 1500 We need a cliffhanger. What am I going to do with the truck? What am I going to do with the $1,500 truck? That's the question for the... Not just what am I going to get, but what am I going to do with the I think you spray paint happyhour.fm on the side of it. And, and you drive it around. White spray paint. And white spray paint. Orange is more of our, of our color. Orange, Orange on black, black is more of our color. Yes. Oof, that's kind of Halloweenish. We're Halloweenish. So our logo okay. is very... Sun you're, you're our logo is Whiskey at Sunset. So, orange. Wow, I'd never heard it described that well, way. I thought it was just... Our, our whole vibe is whiskey at sunset. I wonder how we're doing in Finland. I wonder because... Did you edit and, and publish the last episode yes, yet? Yes, I have. I've been oh, better about so, that lately. So, the Finnish... The Finlanders... Have, the Finnish have finished. Might have yes. listened. And now we got them on because we did get an uptick. Comes and goes. The, the Finns are finicky. Finicky. So, I wonder what kind of person would listen to this fucking podcast. Yeah, it makes no sense me, to me. Me too. So, I we have some. There's a bunch of people. I have some shit to talk about, Dennis. Shut the hell up about your black truck. Let's. Green. Yes. Yes, you are. Maybe I'm funny. What kind of what color truck I'm going to buy? Green. Orange. Black. Black. So it can't happen again. Clever, because. The whole reason that your truck got stolen was because it wasn't black. And it could be turned to black. Right. And if you buy a black truck, then it can't possibly happen. That's totally logical. Truck's idling outside my friend's house. Rolling Stones are playing on the radio. Truck is nice and warm. A dude's riding by, and what he hears on the radio is, I see a green truck, and I want it painted black. It's so fucking cold out here from my stomach to my back. I'm going to steal that truck and take it down the road. On right. and on. This could go on and on. I don't want to talk to about my knees, to my ball sack. Episode. Yes. Except this truck and other trucks I've had. Because this is my first no. truck. I've had lots of trucks. You're, you're not Jeeps. a truck virgin. Got a white Toyota. I bought a Toyota once that was lifted on lifts. So you literally had the three foot step ladder to get into it. And I bought it because I had a field behind my house where they were excavating uh, fucking sand and, and rock and shit so I could go out 
And it was so big that you had to have a ladder to get into it. His uh, little six-cylinder Toyota. And it was painted pink. It was like a demolition thing. I got it for next to nothing. 1800 bucks. I loved it. Pinkish. Lots of colors. And I drove it in. I drove it into my yard. And big giant wheels on it. I drove it into my yard. My wife, my kids are all like, cool, cool. And my wife was like, what did you do? What have you, you done do? now, Dennis? And I said, well, I had this money. And I, my truck you had what money? And I bought it from my other truck. And so... She was pissed, yeah. and it was ridiculous for me to do this. But I got in it, got my ladder out, climbed in, it started up, and went right out into the field and blew a motherfucking gasket. The truck had to be towed out of the field, not an hour and a half after I fucking bought it. <laughs> How uh, she puts up with you, we will never know. But, Dennis. Yes. Since our last discussion, where I was most of the way through the young pope. Oh. I have finished The Young Pope. Oh, you have. And I have continued on to The New Pope. No kidding. I have. But I have some notes. So, I have some notes about The Young Pope. Each? Yes. I'm all ears. So, because you've seen this recently, again, what's the deal with the super obese lady? Like, what, where there's this woman that needs to be removed from, by breaking a wall to take her out of the apartment. Um, yes. I don't understand what purpose that character plays in the so, series. The priest, the, priest, the uh, Spanish, whatever his name yes, is. Yes, what was his name? Father? Gutierrez. It'd be nice. What is it? Gut yes, yes. He, as a minister of God, somehow befriends this woman who I think was in the same apartment building. Yeah, as I think so. And as a man of the cloth, he helped her. And he, as it turns out, was her only friend. And the reason that he met her was because she was his landlady. Correct. And they became friends. And as an alcoholic and as a homosexual... How do you have this memory? He, this blows my mind. He, he, it, it's homosexuality. has nothing to do with this whatsoever. It's a little dip, bit of a twist. But the main yes. point here is that they became friends. And because he was certainly as lonely as she was, and also in, in not his alcoholism in New York City yes. wasn't any worse or better than what it was in the Correct. Vatican. He drank cases of booze. He drank himself to sleep every night for reasons we never quite understood. But he befriended her, and what she took from it was much more of a spiritual, all-encompassing, holistic relationship because when she knew that he was leaving, she said, come to me, and she couldn't bring herself to say, I love you, because it really wasn't about that. But what she said to him is, we are breathing the same air. Which is super and they just important showed nowadays. showed the two yes. of them, nose to nose, breathing the same air. And her point was, this is in, such an important relationship. This is intimate. To me. Uh, in, and he, by his silence, he agreed. But unlike her, it confused him. And to be nose to nose and to breathe the same air is super intimate, whether we like it or not. Like, you don't have to. There's more to the intimacy. You don't have to here. kiss someone the to intimacy, be intimate. The intimacy, much beyond the breathing the same air, which is actually, as research shows, the most intimate gesture that a person can have to another person, Indeed. involves stroking their hair. And the woman, bedridden, obese woman, had by the hair, by the back of the head, bringing him not in any particularly, not a violent way, but certainly aggressive, assertive, certainly, bringing him closer and closer, but she had him in essentially a lover's position. Mm -hmm. And when he was watching it happen and he just said goodbye, it affected him for the moment, but it didn't affect him beyond that because he said, okay, it's time to go. And he went out and he was watching and probably praying for her as she got pulled out. And when she said, take me back, take me back, he just walked away. And so she wouldn't, if you would have asked her if that moment, if I bring, if we bring you back here, what's going to happen? And she said, I don't know. I don't care. Bring me back in. And someone would say, do you think a terrorist is going to come back and see you? She would have said yes. I, yes, I, I agree. I hope so. Mm -hmm. She would have said, I hope so. I hope that there were, but now dice. Okay. So your answer to my question is she provides some extra depth to his character. She's not independent of him as a, as a character, but her character in and of itself is an interesting piece of writing because... Unlike sure, and every other actor, every other right. role in the movie, 
is not played by someone who weighs 650 pounds and has to be taken out of the bed. It is so freaking quirky that her character in and of itself is a minor character, so it isn't just that it serves the purpose of refining his It's also just entertaining as a side piece. Entertaining. Of, it's a side yes. story that doesn't necessarily progress the whole narrative, but it's a interesting side story that... What it does is it's, it sets... It, it makes you more interested in what's happening with this priest and this examination and how all that's going to work because he had, for that episode that you're describing, the central role of the entire right. episode. And I think it was the might have been the opening of, of, of a particular season. But anyway, it's the first note you have, so I'm glad we'll be recording for the next three and a half hours. What's the next question? The next note. Yeah, somehow during, I guess, this episode, there was a time where, where someone said, I guess the guy that was under, that was accused, uh, got a phone call. And it occurred to me that wouldn't it be fun to, at one point in your life, say, we can't talk about this on the phone. We'll talk about this in person. Because to be so important that you are concerned about telephone fraud, yeah. about your own thing, which... Have you never done that? I think we need to take this off of Zoom and go on to Skype, that this <laughs> call can be... Dennis, Dennis, we'll talk about yeah. this offline. Uh, no, but this reminded me that my kids, having now absorbed enough American culture, my daughter says, just one time, I'd like to hop into a taxi and say, follow that car. <laughs> because that's what they do in all the fucking movies. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's, a good, that's a good one. I haven't... I actually haven't done that. And so what else from the old Pope? Because I want to hear about the well, new, And I'm ready to start it again now that I know, because I ended Town. It's over. Uh, I find it interesting, the Secretary of State's, whatever his name is, how he's best friends with this disabled person. Uh, and... What's his... It's, his only, it's the only honest person he deals with, Eduardo? Yes. No, yeah, not... It, a, no, Ger Geronimo. Geronimo. Yeah. No, Geronimo. Geronimo. Yeah, but... And it's the same thing as the fat lady. It's yeah, the same thing. I, I like I like this idea, and it's it reflects what I understand about mental health in general. That it's good to have someone that you can talk to and tell all of your fucking secrets to, and know that that they will not tell anyone. To and most of us don't have that person. Most of us, anyone that we want to talk to, you can pay a psychiatrist a bunch of money, where you can talk to them and then hope that that they don't tell anyone, or as is made interesting on in the following season of this show. Potentially, you could tell a priest everything that you were feeling or, or weird about. <laughs> not after watching The Young Pope. I don't <laughs> not if you're watching the, yeah, the following, yes. But they say that uh, it's generally acknowledged that having someone that you can tell all of your problems to, like you and I do on this very podcast, is very healthy for... <laughs> and, and in the case of the Secretary of the State, he's such a diabolical uh, character that... The human is, I, I grew up Catholic, I went to Catholic grade school, I had priests and nuns, I went to Catholic high school priests and nuns. And so I've been around priests and nuns for all of my formative years. And How does he measure up to your expectation? This is what I've learned about the priests, particularly the priests, and a couple of the nuns that I've known, is that when you get to know them a little bit and you appreciate their humanness and their funny Humanity. characteristics like everybody has, as opposed to the ones that always have the, the cloth mm -hmm. on. As if to say, everything they say is just very guarded, carefully worded, right. and my son, my friend, this or that. Whereas, whereas when they kick back and they have a cigarette and a glass of gin, it's uh, not that I'm sat with a priest who has a cigarette and a glass <laughs> of gin. But I've known priests who will not be afraid whatsoever to let you know who they are. I had one minister, not a priest, but a minister when I turned Presbyterian for a while. Hey, uh, I just want to extend you know, an offer to any priest who would like to have a glass of gin and come onto this show t <laughs> to talk. You are welcome. Okay, continue. You are welcome. We're good at the lines. Open the lines. See what we get. <laughs> Come on, right. Father. Anyway. And so it's the same with these cardinals and, and these that you see, that part of the life. Now, I'm going to give you an image, and I want you to rank this image out of all these amazing images that you get from this series, which, in, in my view, and I've seen it a couple of times now, is that some of them stick with you, and they're going to stick yes. with me. But here's an image, and I want you to rank it in terms of all images. The, the cardinal who was in charge of recruiting, of the recruitment and processing of new priests, was discovered by the new pope, the young pope, early on to be a homosexual. And so he disband, he put him out of his misery and, and put him someplace else. He comes, into the, he comes into the series a little bit later. And in the particular series he's in, since you've seen the whole thing, he's entering into a relationship, a romantic relationship with uh, Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. Right, 
At the end of that episode, they show him dancing. Where does that image of that cardinal dancing fit in? Because for into your, in, to me, it's the most, one of the most compelling images that I've retained. It's him I've noticed that a lot of the final credits involve people dancing. Oh, quite. It's there. Yeah. Stuff. I don't recall exactly the one you're referring to. Oh, no. Then it didn't register for you like it did for me. But this concept of having someone to tell all, all of your problem, problems to, there is actually a term in my line of work called rubber duck debugging. And the idea is if you call over a colleague and say, hey, this piece of code is not working. When I do this, it should do like this, and but it doesn't. But then most of the time, most and by most 85% of the time, just by explaining it, just by explaining what you mean and what the thing should do to someone else enables you to figure out what the problem is. And and you and, and you're in the middle of it and you say, I guess I've just convinced myself that I really do know how to do it. And but we have this term that before you explain it to your colleague, you should explain it to a rubber duck that sits on your desk. Um, do you have one? I do actually. Hold on. Let me get it. This was given to me. Oh. It's a duck. It, he has it's on a, a German it, army helmet. No, it's Duck Vader. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it was given to me by some Russians. It might have microphones in it. I don't know. But it's been in my office ever since. But but this idea that that just having someone to talk to and to get and to vocalize your thoughts is most of the cure for your problems, which I like. And so I like that the Secretary of State Yellow. More yellow does that very nicely. And I like that they chose to use the fact that he's just taking care of this guy Young man. who uh, is just, he says, you're my best friend. And he runs everything by him. And he, but he knows that this is someone that will not reveal his secrets. Let me, let me draw your attention to the, and I'm sure you've got other things to talk about that may have happened before this, but tell me your impressions of the power of the first papal address that he makes where people can see him, which is the conclusion of the of one of the concluding moments of the series. How did that affect you? Not that much. Like, I wasn't... I, I didn't think, oh, this is when they can finally... S you, you mean of, of the young pope? Yeah. I didn't... I wasn't thinking, oh, this is a very important thing. But I did recall that he looked into the clouds and there appeared the, the shape of Jesus in the clouds. And I thought... No, it's a thing well, the, that... The, if I recall, the, uh, didn't his father transform into Jesus? Didn't his father... Maybe. Like, his parents are still a mystery. Yeah, I don't know. But that was interesting. And then he just collapsed. And it was like, oh, end of, end of season. Because... Like, this is clearly the same show. But the... Like the database of the way that people show, of the way that Netflix stream shows, doesn't not Netflix, uh, HBO. That the database doesn't allow for you to change the fucking name of your show for the second season. The new, let's see, it's so confusing. The new Pope is clearly the second season of what was the Young Pope because it's got all the same actors. Before when, but when you go to HBO, it comes up like that. Yeah, but it's no, it? it doesn't say this is the second season. Oh, it just, it's a different. Uh, it's a different show. And oh, right. like I, I asked you about this. No, not like True Detective. True, De True Detective has the same title of this of the show, and the second season is less. No, in True Detective, the second season is unrelated to the first season. There are no. But when you go to the second season of True Detective, and you choose the code for your season, it doesn't say S two, episode yes. one. It's, it, do you think it does? I think it would. I don't think it does. But that's because the name of the show hasn't changed. But here, they changed the name of the uh, show. Well, you make it, it the point. It's a good point. But, and you're right Which about Which is confusing. This, I think and I actually, you misled me because you said, oh, no, the new Pope is a different show. And I said, is it based in the same universe? And you said, oh, the Vatican, whatever. But no, it's like the same freaking people. All the. I told yeah, you, that was my position. But, I didn't argue the point. Anyway, it's the second season of the same show. But after finishing the young pope, it's so fucking confusing. The new pope. <laughs> it's wait a minute. Let me interrupt you a second. But it's really not confusing. The first is the young pope, and then when he's out of the way, they have a new yes. one. So it's called the new pope. So one is young. Number one is young. Number two is new. 
it might be better for you easier if it was called the young pope and then the old pope but it doesn't go there i know it's like young and new or, or... and it's not the same show it's yes, it the second show in the same series okay it's a different show in the same Semantics. series uh language is important it's important you don't think it's important it's important to our listeners you owe it to them. You owe it to me, but I'll put myself aside. You owe it to our listeners that words make a difference. Why would they be listening? Okay. They listen to your words. So it's not I watched ever. the first episode of The New Pope, and I was like... Are you... Well, the New Pope? That's confusing. Is it the second one or the first one? Because <laughs> the first one was young, but he was new. Fuck dude. you. Oh, I don't know. I watched the, I watched the Fuck You Pope, and <laughs> it was... I so wanted to see Johnny Malkovich, but they didn't give it to me on the first episode. There was this whole thing about the him, with, uh, with this other guy, the, the people waiting and watching. And no, listening, but listening to his no, no, music. But it was this. It was the guy that everyone confided in the Vatican, and they chose him as pope because, first of all, the Boyello and this other guy played by the same actor. Like they decided, let's have these two people played by the same actor. And I swear to you, they also had a guy in those early episodes that was played by John Malkovich. I swear there was another guy, and they decided let's. Let's have this new person and have one of the characters say, boy, he's the splitting image of this other guy. And and then it became clear that it was the same actor. But they, And what was he, Tavoyola? Was it his brother? No, it was unrelated. Just it's some just, other person. That, I found that, and I remember the, remembering this. I found that very... It was a, it was a, it was a poorly I, I, uh, constructed conceit. I didn't, and I recall now, but I didn't like yeah. that so much. But that's what you can say about the first but, episode. Maybe and, two. and then they said, "Let's let's do this deal where we get the weakest possible person that we can control." And you sent me this thing about someone hypothesizing about how the young pope with Jude Law was a metaphor for Trump. And I, yes, I totally felt that the whole time. It was like, let's get this guy that, that doesn't know the rules and will break the rules and will question everything and break everything. But the reason for the uh, submission to you was the fact that the article used the same exact line from episode 9 of the Pope that, that I sent you, you did. That you appreciated yes. the quote, which was your problem is you think you're a hinge and you're the yes. door. That's all you sent me because you love yes. the quote. And the article that I sent you, was it from Atlanta? It was, yeah. Was... That was embedded yes, in the it was, it was. And I, I love that. But the but also in that is what happened in the New Pope where the where Voyello, rather than fight this battle against his arch rival played by himself, this other guy where they had split the vote, he decided, let's vote in this patsy that I can control. And they did that and the patsy that they voted in, I loved they had this stupid thing where he had all of his opening speech laid out and a pigeon came and took it away. That was silly. But the... I'd... It wasn't a pigeon. It was the Holy Ghost, who's often depicted as a, a the dove. Ho- <laughs> I couldn't find it was the, the, the Holy Pigeon. Find yes. Pigeon. <laughs> and it came and took it away. And then he found in himself, like, he realized, it clicked, oh, that, yes. oh, wait, I have did. total fucking power now. And it was interesting to contemplate and witness that I don't want to be president. I don't want to be dictator. I don't want to be the ruler of, of everything. But if I was forced into that role, I think pretty quickly it would dawn on me that, oh, wait, everyone has to do what I say now. And that flip of the switch of, I don't want to, I don't want to be president because I don't want the responsibility. But the but flip side of responsibility is power. And when you get it, you got exactly. it. Exactly. Which is why... The electoral college will never be reformed, and all of those things that the the way we elect people is fundamentally broken and will continue to be. Because once you get into that position, you don't want to mess with how you got there. But anyway, that's a side note. But I liked I liked how this guy flipped that switch, and then how horrified everyone in the Vatican was when he was like, "No, we need to get rid of all of our riches and give everything to the poor," and how. Everyone was like, oh, whoa. Like, it's like the yeah. emperor was pointed out that they don't have any clothes. The Vatican was pointed out that they are draped in gold all the time. And, and what a way interesting. To live. I like that point of the series. And Makovic. Well, hold on. No, we're not, we haven't made it to Makovic yet. This is the first guy in episode one oh. of the new. Oh, it was right. this other Fran- I jumped ahead. I, I, Francis the 17th okay. or whatever. And, but then, okay, so my other thoughts on the new Pope. First of all, the opening credits. Sexual writhing nuns. Oh yeah. my God! 
And you know what? I got to mention this. The reason that the dancing cardinal didn't register with you is because you haven't seen it yet. This love affair happens, and he dances in, in season two. There you go. But this... The writhing nuns dancing. Like, I, I specifically wrote down the word, completely. writhing. the words writhing nuns. It, it moves from a level of... The second season moves to a level of uh, sacrilege, which the first season only foretold. Yes. Yes. And hold um, on. The, like, the second season, in the first 30 seconds... There's a nun who is who is sponge bathing Jude Law, and then yeah. pretty much goes off to masturbate for a while, like in the, in the first thirty seconds. And you're thinking this is a new <laughs> right? season. So, whoa! Like she she considered what might be under the cloth over his genitals, and then she lay down, and then came back up breathing really heavily. That's, okay, that may be the image we're left with because I I gotta go, but that gives me a chuckle. Now we I have, have so much e- extra news to talk about. I know about. you're gonna have to carry it on. Yeah, I haven't seen the new. I got to nope. see the new. That's my homework. Not just about this, but like life news, but whatever. It's fine. You have to go. I got to go, man. Yes, yeah. we're late today because, hey, we are about to change our daylight savings time, and then we're going to be like in sync again because right now we're out of okay. sync. So, Because we're an hour too yes. early for you. So yeah. you're like... Hey, let me know. I'm cool. Hey, man. Cool. We're, we're planning our first little trip COVID during the COVID. We're getting in a car and driving an hour west to a little town on Lake Michigan that has some of the best pizza anywhere in the state. We're renting a hotel room for two nights. And it's six miles from the sand dunes and six miles from another two or three miles to one of the top 100 beaches in America, St. Joseph, Michigan. You'd be surprised to see that. One of the top 100 beaches in America is in Michigan? That surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. We also have recently booked a trip in June that is pretty exciting. Where are you going? Hmm. I don't know. Do you have to leave, or do you want me to talk about it? Russia? No. Go back going, to Russia. Go to going China. To uh, Sevilla. Sevilla, Spain. Holy. Yes, we have an Airbnb oh. that is just gorgeous, and we're gonna spend some time in the south. Is it somewhere near your anniversary? No. You could count it towards. <laughs> it's towards our normal time when we would be in America. But we're canceling oh, that trip and using right. our vacation time. So am I going to see you in September? I doubt it strongly. See you in September. Probably. Yes, we'll see you when the summer's through. Playing golf on the beaches of Myrtle. Oh, I will feel quite fertile Ooh. to ride. Our piano player's coming. Fertile Beach. Fertile Beach. Hasta la vista, baby. Buena noche. Hey, highlight of my week. I don't think I've laughed out loud much, although I laughed out loud today when my little four-year-old granddaughter, I was explaining something to her about she needed to eat her oatmeal along with her frozen fruit, this and that, and she looks at me and she says, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hey, that's what our listeners think. And I said, did you just say blah, blah, blah to me? And she said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love you, man. Never Summation please. of the episode. Okay, that does it for episode number 103. You can find the fairly short show notes at happyhour.fm slash 103. We didn't really talk a lot about externally linkable articles in this particular episode, but you can find the article where the someone is talking about the young pope being related to Donald Trump. That's kind of interesting. And we'll see you next week.